Hey everyone, my name is Olav, and in this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know before buying a computer for Blender. The purpose of this video is not to tell you exactly what computer you should go out and buy, but to give you enough information to make an informed decision. I have no sponsors in this video, so uh, when I make recommendations on the brands and so on, it is not because of sponsorships or any kind of uh, paid endorsements. Now, before we go into the presentation, I want you to keep in mind that in most cases, what specifications your computer has do not really matter much, with uh, three exceptions, which I will go into later. If you are a casual user of Blender, who just uses the software from time to time, most computers will work just fine for you. I still use my uh, MacBook Pro from uh, 2015 during vacations for uh, Blender use. And if it was not for me upgrading all my tutorials to a 4K resolution, I would still do just fine with my old computer with a GTX 970, which is a mid-range graphics card from 2014. At the end of the day, it is your creativity and experience level in Blender that is the most important factor, not how powerful your computer is. Having an expensive computer is not a shortcut to uh, great renders, but will make everything you do in Blender faster and smoother. However, there are three cases where uh, computer specifications really make a difference. Rendering cycles animations, high poly sculpting, and baking physics simulations. For those topics, the uh, more power you have, the uh, better. Now, let's get into the guide itself. The first topic is uh, operating systems, and uh, Blender works great for all three major operating systems for computers. Linux has proven to have the fastest render in Blender with the same hardware, and that is because Linux is uh, more efficient in building the scenes when you render due to the way it's structured, and can render up to twice as fast as uh, Windows 10 with the same specifications. CG Geek has made a great video on the topic for those interested. I personally mostly use Windows 10, even for Blender, as I generally prefer Windows 10 for its uh, user friendliness. Blender also works fine for macOS, but because uh, proper graphics cards for Apple computers are so expensive, most heavy Blender users tend to stay away from the OS. Even though I do like the uh, macOS, Getting an Apple computer as my main desktop computer makes absolutely no sense for me considering the insane prices you have to pay for proper graphics cards for Macs. For most people, I would say that uh, Windows 10, or uh, it's just Windows in general, is the ideal OS for Blender. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, graphics card or the uh, GPU. For most uh, Blender users, the uh, graphics card will be the most important part of the rig. Having a GPU will improve render times dramatically and will also improve performance in the viewport. You can also render with a CPU, but uh, that will be much slower, even with really great CPUs. The uh, GPU is uh, dedicated to graphics and therefore does that job really great. The GPU is important both for the Cycles render engine and for EV. A uh, GPU will also improve the performance in the viewport for high poly models like a uh, Sculpt. And uh, when it comes to the brand of the GPU, Nvidia has always been the go-to brand for GPUs for Blender users, as uh, AMD has historically lacked support in Cycles and Nvidia cards are generally more closely integrated into the Blender software. The support might be better for AMD these days, but I recommend just going for NVIDIA cards for the smoothest experience. I currently have the RTX 2080 Super, and before that I had the GTX 970, and before that again I had the GTX 670. So I uh, generally go for NVIDIA graphics cards. The uh, faster GPU you have, the uh, better. And also try to make sure to get a uh, 
lot of uh, GPU memory for your uh, GPU. And that is because if you run out of a GPU memory, the uh, CPU will take over the render and the render will take a uh, lot more time to uh, finish. If you want to compare GPUs, you can go to the uh, Blender benchmark site, which has collected a large number of samples from various GPUs and CPUs. And you can also benchmark your uh, current computer so that you can compare the results of uh, the uh, GPUs and CPUs you consider buying with your own computer. As you can see, AMD dominates the CPU space and NVIDIA dominates the GPU space. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, CPU. And when it comes to the CPU, you generally get what you pay for. Find one that uh, fits your budget. And I would uh, personally prioritize the uh, GPU over the CPU in your budget. These days, AMD tends to perform better than Intel in uh, Blender benchmarks, but uh, these things change over time. So uh, compare whatever CPUs you are considering buying and find the best deal for you. We have multi-threading in Blender, so the more cores, the better. If you use the uh, CPU to render in uh, cycles, the uh, number of tiles that you render simultaneously will be equal to the number of cores your uh, CPU has. High clock speeds are uh, not as important in Blender as they are in games, so I would not focus too much on uh, that. But uh, high clock speeds obviously help somewhat. Now, let's talk about the uh, RAM. These days, I would get at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you run out of RAM, Blender can crash. RAM is uh, generally pretty cheap, so I would go for 32 gigabytes of RAM if you can afford it. You probably won't need more than that anytime soon. I never even come close to 32 gigabytes of um, used RAM when multitasking heavy Blender scenes, editing, and browsing Chrome, which uh, many of you know takes a lot of RAM. The times I use the most RAM in Blender are for my uh, heavy flu simulations and if I import any heavy PNGs, but still nowhere close to 32 gigabytes of RAM. One day, 32 gigabytes of RAM will uh, no longer be enough, but uh, by that time, you uh, probably need to buy a uh, whole new computer anyway. For uh, storage, I use a mixture of SSD and hard drives. I run Blender on SSDs, and I save my Blender files on SSDs as well, so that they respond faster. I use my hard drives to uh, store my renders, which uh, usually takes up a lot of space because I often render in uh, 4K and uh, 8K. So uh, you should probably only use hard drives for bulk storage so that you uh, get a uh, faster response time when you uh, open files or open Blender. The uh, things that uh, takes up the most space in uh, Blender are high poly models and uh, high resolution physics simulations. And the high resolution physics simulations can um, take up space up to the hundreds of uh, gigabytes. How much space you need and uh, how much space you can afford is uh, probably something you know the best and something you have to figure out yourself. However, you uh, generally get what you pay for in uh, this category. So uh, the more storage, the more expensive, and the more expensive a certain capacity is, the uh, faster it can read and write. SSDs are uh, generally much faster than hard drives, but uh, hard drives gives you a lot more storage capacity for each dollar you uh, spend. Also keep in mind that there is a huge difference between different types of uh, SSDs in terms of uh, speed and quality. Now, the next question is, uh, should you get a uh, laptop or a desktop computer? You will get much more power for your money when you buy a desktop computer 
compared to a laptop, there is a huge difference. Gaming laptops tend to be the best laptops for using Blender, but their battery life tends to be really bad. The ideal setup, if you have the money, would be to have a thin and light laptop for school and work, and then a desktop computer at home with some decent specs. But you have to look at your budgets and your needs before you make that decision. Now, when it comes to the monitor, I would go for screens that are targeted at designers and not screens targeted at gaming and work environments. Designers value great colors, high resolutions, and care less than gamers about high refresh rates and response times. If you game as well, you will have to find a balance between the two. I recommend spending a decent amount of your budget on a great monitor so that you have a monitor that is uh, comfortable to use for longer periods of time and that displays your uh, scenes beautifully and accurately, especially when it comes to the uh, colors. Many people make the mistake of uh, spending almost all of their budget on their high-end computer and then they buy a uh, low-end monitor that is horrible to look at. I think uh, 1440p and uh, 4K monitors with great colors will give you a uh, completely different experience than you would get when uh, using a uh, low-end monitor. If you can't afford uh, such screens in uh, your budget, at least try to get a uh, 1080p display targeted at designers. Okay, so to uh, summarize it all, focus on the uh, GPU. That should be your first priority and make sure to look up the benchmarks for both the CPU and the GPU. Go for 16 gigabytes or more for your RAM, get a monitor for designers and do all those things while you try not to blow your budget completely. And these are my specifications for those who are wondering. I got the RTX 2080 Super. As you can see, the uh, GPU was my uh, first priority in the budget. And then I got an Intel CPU, which I think uh, works uh, just fine. And I got 32 gigabytes of RAM. I'm very happy with that. And I got some water cooling as well, because I do a lot of rendering. And I have a uh, one terabyte PCI Express SSD, as well as a um, normal one terabyte SATA SSD. The uh, one terabyte PCI Express uh, SSD is much faster, but also more expensive than the SATA SSD. I also got a uh, two terabyte uh, hard drive for uh, storing my renders and uh, so on. And for my screens, I have a 1080p screen, which I uh, rarely use, and a uh, designer screen that is uh, 4K and uh, 32 inches, which I love using. I also use it to uh, play Battlefield 1 from uh, time to time in 4K, and the uh, fact that it's a uh, design monitor has not really been an issue at all, at least for me. And that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching, and subscribe. And also thank you to uh, Mr. Monkey Shoes and Terry Davis for supporting the channel on Patreon.